Once again, I'm coming to you on the road. More cities, more personal one-on-one -on -one encounters, more people becoming part of the International School of Exorcism as we see people set free and raise up a generation of warriors for Christ. Be part of it by enrolling in the School of Exorcism and also making sure that you get your personal one-on-one -on -one encounter. For the last couple of weeks, the public and the press has been obsessed with the life and death of Jeffrey Epstein. His life came to an end on August the 10th of this year, when apparently he killed himself, committed suicide by hanging inside his jail cell in the Metropolitan Correctional Facility in New York City. There were many high-profile people, from princes to former presidents, who had a lot at stake if this man were ever to expose what they were involved with, what others were involved with. So there were a lot of reasons why people had conspiratorial ideas about what happened to him. Much has been written about his professional life and his perverted predilections. However, very little has been said about the private life of Jeffrey Epstein. All we basically know is that he was born to a wealthy Jewish family in New York City. They had a brother, and apparently that brother is now going to inherit his nearly $600 million estate. But students of our International School of Exorcism, those involved with this ministry, can see behind the scenes of, in all likelihood, what happened in his life. They can see through the sexual dysfunction and the perverted lifestyle that he lived, the demonization that was very likely. Let me give you a couple of things that I observe. First of all, he never married. He just couldn't seem to permanently bond with anyone. This could likely be an indication that not only did he sexually abuse people, but that he was sexually abused himself in younger years. Secondly, he was conceived illegitimately. And obviously, he would have known nothing about how to break that curse towards self-negation and self-destruction. Our book, Curse Breaking, has a large section on the curse of illegitimacy based on Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter. It's important that everybody know this curse has to be broken before it takes a toll on an individual's life. The third thing I notice is that he doesn't seem to have ever emotionally bonded with anyone. He knew a lot of people because he had a lot of money, but he didn't seem to have close connections. But I think one of the most interesting parts about the possibility of his demonization is the prolific perversion that this man practiced with psychopathic indifference toward the human toll it was taking on his victims. This is a real Jezebelian trait. If you haven't read my book, Jezebel, you need to read it. Because in that book, you will see a lot of Jeffrey Epstein, why he was the way that he was. These demons had a literal stranglehold on his life. Like Judas, he betrayed those around him and paid the ultimate price of apparently taking his own life. No question about it. Jeffrey Epstein had demons. Cancel curses, break soul ties, cleanse your ancestry, and cast out demons. Enroll now in the International School of Exorcism and the Advanced Academy of Deliverance. For the latest information on resources, seminars, conferences, training institutes, retreats, and international missions, go to boblarson.org. Thank you for your prayers and financial partnership.